and a summary of the contributions that have just been made is um, re he re-emphasized the position of the coordinator that the problem is with our attitude as a people and um, that we should identify our identity, uh, we should work on our identity politics um, such that a people will begin to see themselves as one, um, look at uh, the things that bind us together. We should look at, overlook issues like state of origin and probably adopt what we call state of residency so that people are courageous enough to invest in systems where they have lived. And also to, to explore options to that ensure that policies of government do not come to disrupt investments and people incur losses and there is no remedy or damages paid for that. You can, we, if we cast our minds back to the situation that happened with Gokada, when they came and invested heavily in Nigeria and had government support, government came for their launch, took pictures and all of that. And then because someone's political ambition was threatened by uh, some business owners who were benefiting from the business that Gokala came and invested in, woke up one day and then banned the business. And many people were out of job and people incurred losses as a result of that. That is discouraging and will not allow anyone to come and invest in the country further increasing our poverty problems. He also asked the questions how we will ensure that we have qualified people in power. So we look at our federal character system and the quota system, how that has affected the quality that we have in, in, in the nation now. Uh, one will attest that um, the, the recent appointments into the office of the AGF is one of of the very few in recent times that has spoken to the quality that we, we, we need as a nation, we will confess and agree with me that in 1999, the quality of persons that we had as AGs of states it, it was what is expected of the Constitution. When the Constitution says someone who has not less than 10 years experience, but we, don't, we can't say that for now. It has turned to political appointments. And so he asked the questions, how we will ensure that in doing inclusion, we do not slide into mediocrity. Thank you very much, sir, for these contributions. I don't know if there is anyone who has asked questions online or contributions online. We will now go to the next item, which is um, to open the floor for discussions. We'll be giving seven, seven minutes to the people who are here at the table and then three minutes to any other person who has a contribution to make Leonard Silks and Madame Isora seven minutes, then three minutes to. Okay, can they, can they, can we run the? Please, if there is a question from online, please run it through the screen. Or if someone, six questions, they want to speak, please, can you put them on so that they can. Can you put them on so that they can speak to us? Thank you. But while we are doing that, let's take contributions from the floor here. Leonard Six, sir. Can I come, sir? <laughs> All right, sir. Let me come to you, sir. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to be here today in two respects. First of all, I'm happy to be before the learners sake, our senior, senior, Kanu Agabi, AGF Emeritus, and a man of many cars. But again, I'm standing before, I've said it always. Well, I'll repeat it also. Our senior, I call him a, I don't call him a general because he's beyond a general now. Um, he has become a dominion himself, JB Daudu SAN. 
what our father here said today is why I am very much always happy before, to be before him. He has one thing, courage. The ability to speak the truth and stand on it, irrespective of whose horse he is, God. And there was another thing. My, our senior seniors here said today, he said Nigeria has all the talent. While I was sitting down by the side of my brother here, what was emanating from his presentation was so deep, extremely deep, that I had to look whether the paper before me is one of the papers is presenting. And when I saw it, I said, I, I thank God, I have it. And I will go and interrogate it. We are grateful. One thing I have come to know, opportunity like this is what gives us knowledge. Knowledge is continuous and education is continuous. I have only short contribution to make into this issue. Only four. I concede and I agree totally that the problem ordinarily is not in the Constitution. It's in ourselves. I agree. But we equally engage in self-denial. Every day you hear us talk of local government, local government, local government. I think we have not really made up our mind as to the type of federalism we want. The kind of status we want to give the local government is not clearly spread out. And that is why they are an appendage to the governments. Why they cannot act as they ought to act, as we expect them to act, because by the constitution itself, the statement in the constitution is a general statement, very ambiguous and move us. Until that is sorted out, we'll continue to cry it tomorrow. That is the first. Then the second one is this. I am of the view, subject to a cultural review. I have watched and have witnessed constitutional amendment here and there. I have the clear view that the National Assembly should be stopped from wasting the fund of this great nation. Why did I say so? We have witnessed several where constitutional <coughs> amendments have been undertaken with beautiful ideas, daring put, but it ended up in that chamber, not being passed. The reason is this, simple. Within the National Assembly, at the centripetal and centrifugal forces in contestation, and they will never approve what is not agreed upon. As of today, all of us we agree that there, there appear to be a general consensus or a near general consensus about state police. So if you take a piece of legislature to the National Assembly now or state police, I assure you, it will say true. But yesterday it's not possible. So my understanding and my feeling is that the National Assembly should be stopped. Why the geopolitical leaders of this country should first of all have a daily and a conversation as to what they want this country to be like. If there is a general consensus within the geopolitics and that idea is taken to the National Assembly, because every assemblyman, as of rep or senator, most of them are beholden to a capone, to a father, to a man, or to the governors. <laughs> and it's only what they ask them to do, they do there. These are the binding minds that we should take this problem to. Let them come in a conclave and conference and agree. This is how we want this nation to be run. Then you can take it to the National Assembly. Or else, we are wasting time. This third one is this. I am totally of the view that we don't need uh, bicameral legislature. I am totally of that view. We need just one. And the one I am talking of is just not in the mode it is now, but in the Senate. And recalibrate it, redesign it, and it will suit the nation. We need no two uh, houses. Either you call it as, uh, as of rep, or you call it Senate, but redesign it to bring equilibrium within the whole state, and there will be an element of harmony and unanimity that will solve our problem. I have never, never disagreed with the issue of leadership. For my people said, when the head is rotting, the body 
for go about it. It's already dead. So we have problem of leadership. And then when we talk of the followership, it is unfortunate as it has been said. We are, we are students of history. History are, teaches us yesterday, prepares us for today, and we extrapolate to tomorrow. But unfortunately, with all respect, what we are seeing now, this generation, we are talking of youth. Sorry, I have to say this. The youth we are talking of may not be the answer. Because I do know one thing which I've been facing. This generation I've seen is not our generation. And when the people are talking of things that are to, de to destroy the world in the nearest future, this thing we are holding, these are the things I've seen. I'm talking from a personal experience. You see your children, this fight must start from the homes. I'm sorry to say so. You see your children wake up every day, they are on this. In the night, they are on this. I will tell you my personal example. I, told, I, I brought my daughter on holiday. See, the mother is not allowed. The mother, I was the one to want to eat uh, what, what do you call, uh, shawarma, pizza, this and that, that and then they drink uh, coke. And, and uh, then when I went to her room, one coke bottle is there, thrown it down. Another one is fling there. Do you know what she's looking at? She says she wants to go and join her auntie in America. She's so much carried away by. America. And I told her that, no, my father brought me. I'm your father. Are you enjoying me? I'm an Edo man. Do you know what is called uh, Gary? He doesn't know. Do you know cassava? From today, this thing you call shiwama, I've been a pizza, not in this house. And you are no longer going to America. You must first of all learn how to pan pan the yam in this house. And give me black soup. <coughs> I will give you passport to America. Or else I've lost you. <coughs> the fight is here. These are my few contributions. I'm privileged to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. And please, when that pounded yam is ready, please do invite us. <laughs> With black soup, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful contribution. Quickly, we move to Madam Ozioma Izora for her contribution. Thank you, ma. Thank you so much, Nello. Morning, <laughs> everyone. I don't know where to start from, but I, I've, I've done one, two, three, so I shall just do hop, step, and jump. Thank you for the privilege of uh, saying something. And uh, sir, Chivagabi, let me just say, I, I, my students, I hope, are online because Bay's motto is uh, learn to live. So my constitutional law students have been asked to uh, join this because the quest, the, this conversation will be ongoing when they become lawyers as well. I, I wanted to react to um, uh, Chief over, um, Alhaji over there uh, because I, I just wanted to say that I think he's a genuinely good person. He means well for Nigeria. He's got this fire and he spoke to so many areas where indeed we need help. What, and they actually went extra constitutional, but they are well meant. And I hope the way Chief Agabi prayed that you get to be in a position where you get to affects Nigeria. I believe, you, I believe you totally, totally mean what you're saying. Uh, let, let me just say on police, for instance, this, I think we have to uh, throw away the, the um, inherited force that we attach to police. A lot is already happening in the law area, they've, they've, we've done a new police act, there's act, there are all sorts of reforms which we can help to work with the police to make them more humane. If they're working, then we'll probably still be able to run the police as is, even with the problems uh, in the constitution where a governor practically has to beg the president, you know, to get the police if he has a problem. Those are question of personality. The police as is, 
is still workable if we have right leaders who mean well for Nigeria. I mean, why should the president hold off letting police go to any part of, the Ni of Nigeria to mop up issues? Because I remember stories from history of when governors became, it wasn't governor, it was native authorities in those days, became super powerful because they controlled the original police. We need, well, <laughs> right now the situation uh, in um, security is making a moteco and some of these things inevitable. But don't talk about emo states where we do not know who is guarding us, whether it's unknown government or what they call the Bubago or what. I, can't, I haven't been able to go to my village since 2021 January, after my mother's burial. And he spoke, it's, it's, a very, it's a terrible situation. So I don't know if I want state police, I don't. Um, the other one that I ran to was this indivisibility of the country. If, if I'm answering the question whether further amendment of constitution will solve our problem, I'm asking if there is a provision for possible amendment, why is indivisibility of Nigeria cast in stone? And I asked Obasanjo the uh, street in uh, Yeradua Center on one of these occasions where he said, not in my lifetime, Nigeria will remain indivisible. And I'm like, I have five children, they live all over the world. Are you speaking for them too? Or is it just in your lifetime? How about the rest of Nigeria? We have a constitution that says, if it's not working, we can amend. We can amend. Why can we never amend indivisibility if it becomes necessary? Ethiopia and some of these other people, they have provision. It is difficult for a reason. It's difficult to amend this uh, cessation clause where they have it, like in Ethiopia and some of these uh, constitutions. It is made sim just like uh, it is difficult to even have st a new states in Nigeria. I remember several attempts about state creation that never bore fruit. But it should still be possible for Nigeria, if it comes to it, to be divisible. I don't see why. Let's not talk about having six VPs, I beg you. Because there are issues about who the, who ha who the president hands over to on certain uh, occasions. Can we not have a commission of local governments Yes, that can superintend what goes on. Let us make professionalize local government. So we don't really need to bother about uh, who runs them. It shouldn't be the governor. If we have ministries, let them run like any other thing. And sorry, the, uh, sir, you, you said local government law is, is provided. Section 7 for the fourth schedule, this is enough to run local government. And now, I hear they have approved, eh? I just read it in my phone now, that both Senate and House of Reps, they've given 774 local governments autonomy. Let's see how that, uh, yeah, yeah, well. But Nigeria's problem is leadership, not, uh, as we all have agreed, not law. And, and sir, about election being um, virtual, it won't happen. Forget it. Ask MBA. We're doing virtual elections. <laughs> and, and if somebody is going to win uh, MBA presidency, you will know from when the election starts, from when it ends. I have abundant of uh, experience on that. It won't happen. And Nigeria, that was what they told us Bivas will do, right? As you're voting, it's counting. It didn't, it, they turned around, and nothing has happened to all those who told us all those lies. And they are on record. Nothing. I think the biggest problem with Nigeria is impunity. Impunity. Nothing happens. Nothing. There's no, nothing to suffer. I used to be neck rep with MBA, and every uh, president handing over, uh, not J. Bisha. <laughs> They would talk about how money was squandered by the other person that they are inheriting from. Just like uh, the current president is telling you how his brother, former president, left empty treasury. Every governor inherits empty treasury. Nobody ever goes to jail. Yes? I think Obiano is still hoping 
around with EFCC, but it will still be resolved. Nothing will happen. Let me stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. That was right on time for the seven minutes. <laughs> and um, yes, the big takeaway, um, she says no to state police. Um, electoral voting uh, will not happen. And um, we should look at how we can make implementation of these laws work. And that is the first question that we will leave for the presenters, especially Mr. Daudu, who said our problem is with implementation and not amendment. How do we ensure, how do we insist on this issue of implementation? I'm aware that Mr. Abdullah Yaya Esen is online and he wants to join us on the screen. Please, can you project Mr. Yaya's page on the screen um, so that we can take his contribution? Mr. Yaya, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Yes, Nicholas, yes, I please, can. Can you put his video? Um, it's um, it's um, it's a privilege to always attend um, any one of the Rule of Law Development Foundation seminars uh, because they are always Mr. Iaya, my apologies, and, um, please. Can extremely you turn on your video, sir? Can you turn on your video, sir? All right, uh, Chinelo, I will try and do so. Okay, sir, thank you. All right, I'll do so. Um, okay, please continue, sir. Don't mind uh, me. Never mind if you, if all, you have it. All right, all right. I, I'll, I'll, I'm trying, I was trying to do so. Now, like I was saying, um, this, these courses are usually extremely enlightening and educating. Now, my contributions would relate to and um, center around the contributions made by my leader, Mr. J.B. Daudu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Now, I, I, I think we must all agree, if we want to be sincere to ourselves, that our problem is not the laws. Now, even if we were to make more laws, even if we were to amend this constitution, as long as the same caliber and quality of leadership are the ones who will enforce and implement this uh, new provisions of the constitution, we will still have the same problems. Now, just recently, there was a problem of selection of a prime minister in Singapore. Now, you will find that the selection system was such that it was merit-based. It was based on merit and people who had character because they are supposed to provide leadership to a country to set the tone for the kind of development that that country is supposed to go through. Now, when we have leaders who do not have character, people who become leaders only because they have criminal matters and to avoid prosecution, they hop from one party to another just so that their sins will be forgiven. You wonder if every time we amend the constitution, that will change anything in any way. So our basic problem, like Mr. Down said, is we must have leadership that has character. For now, I am not too sure if we have people like Mr. Daudu emerge as leaders, the followership will support them. Because just like he gave an example, if you have a situation where everybody stands around, you loot somebody's property, that man is not in government. He's just some businessman who might have expended his hard-earned money to purchase a truck full of items he wants to go and sell. You loot those properties. Everybody, including security men, stand around, watch gleefully, while that goes on, under the pretext that we are hungry. Like he said, tomorrow it might just be you driving in your car and somebody stops you to say, well, you are part of those who stole government money. So I, I, I have to get my own share from you. So our problem has nothing to do with constitutional amendments. It has to do with us. It has to do with us choosing leaders who will provide that direction that we need. 
people who will walk the talk and people who people will have confidence in that when they say tighten your belt you can see them tighten it tightening their own belts not while they ask you to tighten your belt they loosen their own belts so i am i'm, I'm wholly in agreement with mr Daudu that um, our problem is not in um, further amending the constitution that will not solve our problem it is in electing and selecting um, good and responsible leaders with character who will do the right thing. You know, once we get that leader, the followership, I believe, will um, in due course uh, to the line. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I, I will stop at that. Thank you very much, sir. Um, is there any other contribution online? Yes, while, while that was ongoing, um, the question came up for the lead presentation that when you talk about bacchanizing the Supreme Court to divisions, that um, what do you do when there are conflicting decisions of the Supreme Court on certain points, like the situation that happened with the PDP in Plateau State? where even though there was a decision of the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal went ahead to decide a point of law as though it did not know that there was an already existing decision that whether, when there is conflict, that will not cause chaos in the country. Um, quickly, I move on to Mr. Chris. You have three minutes. I just want to appreciate the convener of this rule of law foundation for its ingenuity and for always speaking on topical issue. Uh, when we've been looking at all, uh, maybe the amendments of the constitution, uh, we forgot to refer to some group of labor force that exacerbated our problem. They've done it in the past. And the, uh, another evil is about being committed. I remember 2019 when we came for such webinar. Uh, it was prior to the presidential election, and the labor came up with increment of salary. Nigeria was experiencing galloping inflation, economic meltdown, and depression. No country in the world, if you go by principle of economics, increase salary in those periods. And the Nigerian situation is even peculiar, whereby we are borrowing money to sustain our recurrent expenditure. Our recurrence is about 75%. Our capital that's supposed to foil the economy is just less than 20%. And to my greatest surprise, because of political expediency, the government increased the salary, the so-called minimum wage. And so I will tell the implication. First, I digress. The implication is that our debt profile then was partly 16 trillion. By the time they, that was 25.27 billion, that was in 2018. But it took some months to implement. When they implemented it, under a few months, our debt profile doubles. And it's part, part of the problem killing the countries. At times we look at the other aspect, but there are some people killing the country, and the reality, they are so unproductive. Uh, let's look at the, according to the Bureau of Public Service Reform and IPPIs, the total Nigeria federal workforce is just 720,000. Uh, 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 the economic finding revealed that between 10 to 15 percent of Nigeria working population are civil servants, including ghost workers so, and non-productive workers. In my university, we have about 2,000 workforce. More than less than 50 percent of people do the, uh, do the work. That's the honest truth, and it's like that in every ministry. Then every time they come out and hold the country into ransom. Now we are having a peculiar problem. Nigerian debt profile, as of the second quarter of 2023, was $108 billion. Because of the mismanagement of the past administration, that is $49.85 trillion. Era. When the president tried to resolve the issue, because there's no way we can even service the debt, the country was in 0%. He has no option than to remove the first subsidy and to flow the Naira. Automatically, on, on that, I think, of an eye, the debt, uh, debt profile, that's why that it jumped to 100 $113 million billion, which is 87.38 trillion Naira. It doubled with the, uh, the flow of Naira. 
the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, we can see the free fall of Niger. This group of charlatans and clowns, they are coming out again that this will increase salary. I thought you would talk about stabilizing the economy, stabilizing the system, using some of the palliative to, develop, uh, to improve our infrastructures, like the refiners, the railway, but they are talking about increment of salary, and everybody is keeping quiet. By the time they increase salary, honestly, I should rightly say, some people will beg to, if, to feed. So I have to be to discuss some of this. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm an academic now. Please. So please, I, 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 I don't want to conclude. Another aspect that we are not looking at, sir. Everybody talking about the, uh, the, the federalism. Federalism is a complex system. Like the America, between 1907 till date, they ran six types of federalism. 1907 to 1930, dual federalism. 1930 to 1960, cooperative federalism. 1960 to 1980, creative federalism. 1980 to 2000, which is known as the Reagan federalism because of the insurgency all over the world. Then 2001 to 2008, Bush federalism. Then 2009 to present, which is the progressive adopted by Obama. We need to improve, and finally, just to address some specific or peculiar situation according to the state. We know that there's, we need to review. There's an issue during the time that Nigeria, their profile was in, sorry, I'll round off now. The number of our billionaires that have their investment in Nigeria increased. In fact, their billion increased into double figures because they gave them the monopoly of some products. Recording in progress. They gave them the monopoly of salt, sugar, uh, cement, and all the resources are from Nigeria. Nobody is even addressing. When you talk about resource control, already I, 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 I take, I took down to take to court, and they lost because they controlled the resource and they invoked this private property law that the West imposed. Uh, when the time comes, if we don't address this on time, there won't be property. To, to, there won't even be resources for a state to take over. So, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Um, resource, resource control and distribution. Um, Mr. Emmanuel Oni said he has a question. Please, technical team, if there is any question online, please let me know so I can read it out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Alaji Kogo raised the point that the uh, legislature needs to regulate how they are paid. He made some observations regarding the fact that people who do not come for uh, sittings should not benefit allowances. My question is, what is the practical approach to these problems? The resource of the National Assembly is controlled by them, or maybe a commission that oversees that. What practical ways can you regulate how the National Assembly regulates its internal affairs? Yes, sir, and further to that is also a question that came in as to how do you control members of the National Assembly who, if you implement, if you, if you make that law, who might just come in, sign, and then leave the Nigerian way? How do you punish such people and ensure that they don't get their allowances? Um, the second question here is um, that will single tenure of five years not reduce productivity and further cause distractions in our political space, such that it's not when someone is elected, the next thing that everybody's thinking about is the next election. Um, another person is asking, how do we ensure that section 10 is not further breached by the state, whether we should abolish some of these boards that uh, uh, promote religious practice in the public space. Um, I have a contribution here from Professor Daudu, who um, states that I align myself with the submission of the lead speaker, uh, Alaji Umwa and other speakers. However, we need more pragmatic solutions in order to have a better Nigeria, but our leaders cannot muster the political will for very obvious reasons. I am Professor Benedicta Daudu, and I will congratulate the organizers of this program. It's timely to have this conversation. Thank you so much, Professor Daudu, and thank you for joining us from Taraba. Um, I will now um, hand over the microphone to Mayoga. 
Mr. Adeleji Essay. The coordinator of the Wool of Law Development Foundation, Mr. J.B. Dowd SN, my leader, Chief Kano Agabi SN, elite speaker, and distinguished colleagues. I will start on the premise of first saying that I adopt in total all that has been said by the um, lead speaker, Mr. J.B. Daud SN and Kana Agabi SN, and also note that the problem we have in the country is an attitudinal problem. Our attitude is the major problem. I'll also note, I also note that we also have an institutional problem in the country, in the sense that our institutions are not working. On the issue of amendment, while I agree that attitude is a problem, I'm of the view that there's need for us to amend our constitution. Um, I'm of the view that under the exclusive legislative beliefs, for instance, we have a lot of items there that undoubtedly should not be there. And that raises a fundamental question as to whether indeed we are practicing true federalism in the country. On the issue of amendment, I'm also of the view that going forward, we'll have to look at, for instance, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. You may want to ask yourself, why will the landlord tenant related matter get to the Supreme Court? Why will a dispute between the wife, the, uh, between the, uh, uh, the husband and the wife get to the Supreme Court? I think when we look at issues like this, it raises a fundamental question. It raises the need for us to advocate for an amendment of, of our constitution in this regard. Another area, which of course is a recurring decimal now, is on the issue of state police. I think it's something that we have to urgently look at, and I think this can only be achieved by, uh, apart from having a robust discussion on it, that our law has to be amended in this regard. Another area on the issue of amendment, which, which uh, makes me support the point of amendment, is on the issue of fiscal federalism. And uh, I think I'm, I'm of the view that if, for instance, um, uh, on the issue of uh, if natural resources are found on my domain or in my state, that I should take control of it and not necessarily coming all the way to the center and the center decides what should come to, my, to, 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 to me. I, I think to a very large extent, we may also want to consider this. I, I know it's going to be very difficult, but uh, I, I am of the view that it's something that can or that should be, be considered uh, going forward. Above all, uh, once again, I want to congratulate the organizers of this program and I also want to thank the lead speaker for his thoughts and um, his suggestions. They are well noted. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, sir, for those wonderful contributions. Um, I have further questions here, but are directed to Chief Agabi. Sir, someone is asking that how can the office of the AGF be empowered to ensure proper implementation of laws. I think this question is saying, how do you strengthen the office of the AGF to ensure that there is proper implementation of laws by the executive and other political office holders? And the person is also asking that um, with the power generation that has now been restructured in the country, that how is it possible for states to continue this implementation when gas and other mineral resources, such as coal, remain under the control of the federal government, whether there is need for further restructuring to ensure that states can source some of these materials without going through the federal government. Um, while our presenters are going through the answers to those questions, um, I would invite Mr. Monde Ajay to make 
very short contribution. You have two minutes, sir. May I stand on the protocol already established due to time frame allotted to me? Let me start this way. I, I will try to maintain a neutral ground on this issue, and I will tell you reason. Those who call for amendments, genuine amendment, they are absolutely right. One, because there are some certain things that call for amendment if we are to solve the general problem. And if those amendments are not made, we will not make progress. But those who said that we are tired of this daily ritual of amendment, this regime will come, the first thing on the timetable is amendment. They are also correct because before you talk about amendment, the first question that should come to your mind, what have we done with the existing one? We must assess our level of performance. It's just like a parent whose child always comes to him, mommy, I want new textbooks. If you are a responsible parent, you ask him, how far have you performed in English language that I gave you all the old textbooks? Then if you now supply the new textbook, you are not a helping parent. How far have we gone with the current constitution? They are telling provisions that you don't need somebody from America or UK to come and colonize us to implement. But these particular provisions are left untouched. And in our own right thinking again, we're also calling for amendment. Amendment on what? So that by the time we amend again, we don't beat. And then a few months when another regime comes, we'll come over it again. So I want to say that the problem we are having in Nigeria goes beyond amendment. Even the little one we have, that one we label as product of military because I'm even tired, just like our leader have said, when I hear people talking about this is a product of military, this is product of this and that. Is that why we cannot obey the laws that are there? My own take on this issue is that we don't have this political way to implement what we have. If we are men from here, the eternity will still come back to where we are. And let me also say, when uh, Edda was talking about investors, that uh, people from other country, our brother, we should invite them here, he cited the case of prodigal son. But the truth of the matter is that the prodigal son discovered that going back home, his father is not prodigal, and he will be able to do what is just. But our own case, our parents here, in quote, they are even more prodigal than the prodigal son. There is no longer safe to come to the prodigal uh, father home to come and get something right. So that's where people are running away because the laws we have, we're supposed to implement in a way that will better the laws of the country and the economy. But everybody's about so selfish interest. These laws are there. It's just like the way some of our judges with apology interpret some of these are laws. By the time you see today, they go this way. Tomorrow, they go this way. Then you can also understand that everybody's just about so selfish interest. So I urge every institution to live up to expectation and do what is expected of him. Then we cannot be talking about genuine amendment. Until that one is done, I think if you do anything, we are still coming back to the same level. Thank you for the audience. Thank you very much, sir. May we not be prodigal parents of prodigal sons. <laughs> yes, sir. So now I have come for the answers to our questions. I think we have taken all the questions, both online and here. Um, where do I start from? Uh, let me start. Let, let, me, let me start with you, sir. <laughs> oh. Okay, sir. <laughs> yes, uh, with greatest respect and uh, highest humility, my learned seniors, my brothers, everybody. The first question was talking about uh, the indivisibility of Nigeria. Uh, uh, even though it's not the first, but in my list is the first one. Yes, uh, that is the text of the Constitution. And it's the same Constitution that said that uh, under Sections 8, 9, that uh, it can be amended. So if the amendment subsequently comes with uh, divisibility, that ends the case. So uh, there is nothing sacrosanct. It doesn't mean that because the letter said it is an indivisible and indissoluble. If the same constitution that empowers some institutions to amend it, at the end of it, decide to amend it 
to change the word indivisibility to disability, that ends the case. Uh, on the uh, professionalization of local government area, probably like uh, to have a ministry for local government affairs. We used to have ministries of local government affairs. I think up to now at the level of the states, uh, the ministries of local government affairs are there, but uh, they leave very little to be desired of because they are the ones that are normally, they have taken over section seven of the constitution is the local government affairs ministry that will go there and be doing table payment for local government staff there. And at the end of it, when they finish paying, they go back with the money. They leave two, three million to the chairman to say for your emergency needs within the month. That's all they leave. So I think absolute independence for the local government is the panacea, not uh, any other thing. The third one is... Uh, um, uh, election and the regional BP, which you said, no way. I do concede no way. <laughs> we pass that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, uh, but uh, the one I would like to comment is, uh, you talk about no state police. Someone else there raised the issue of uh, state police. The issue with the Nigerian police is not the issue of uh, whether it's state or whether it's federal. Uh, what Nigerians are seriously looking for is the utility value. Uh, the value to give us the protection of lives and properties. That is what we are looking for. The problem with the Nigerian police, number one, is that the total number we have is 384,000 personnel. Half of this number are there serving as ADCs or courtiers or whatever of the VIPs. You know, um, yes, some of them are carrying Madame's bag. Some of them are there in the vehicles of their excellencies, honorable, distinguished, their royal highnesses, and the rest. So, and if you have money, even as ordinary citizen, you can go and pay. You can get a police officer that will guide you throughout the day if you can be paid. That is the custom. So, uh, half of that number is there. The other half goes in securing embassies, multinational corporations, you know, uh, big, big places, banks, and the rest. So you will discover that very little number is left there to do the decision. Among, the, out of the little number, some are there to navigate traffic. Uh, some are there uh, 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 as uh, decision. So if you look at it carefully, and you live, if you look at the way the country is treating the police, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the commissioner of police, the last commissioner of police who is a friend at the FCT, told me the pathetic situation. He said, hardly will you get a divisional police station that gets more than 50,000 in a month. They give them 50,000 and that is all until next month. And then they use it to buy diesel, you know, to power their vehicles, you know, recharge cards for communication, you know, stationaries and so many other things. What miracle can they apply in that? So there is no concern and care. Uh, regarding the remuneration, and if you are killed there, no post-death uh, welfare for your uh, uh, inheritors and the rest. So you need to increase the number of the police force. But the UN regulation, I think, is one to 400. We are about 230 million Nigerians. You can calculate to approximate what number of police do we need. When Buhari said that 20 or 10,000 10, police officers should be recruited, remember the result interagency rivalry and fight. National Assembly said we are the ones to recruit. Police Abuse Commission said we are the ones to recruit. The Force Headquarters said we are the ones to recruit. Everybody, because everybody wants to bring his own cronies. Some even wants the slot in order to sell out, to sell. Because practically now some employments are normally for sale or they are normally for allocations to the big people that are in the organization. You understand. So it's unfortunate uh, 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 the number is inadequate. And then the weaponry to, con to, to face the insecurity. The weaponry uh, that is in there. When the bandits there, some of them, I think uh, AK-47, uh, or is it 45 or 47? AK-45 is even outdated among them there. They have more sophisticated uh, this thing. They have rocket launchers. They have all these sophisticated uh, this things in such a way that uh, when they are facing 
They are even confiscating military armored tanks and the rest. Who is a police officer there to withstand their gallantry of their, of their evil machinations? So we need to revolutionize the policemen by increasing their number, increasing their welfare, the numerical, the uh, 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 what do you call it, emoluments and everything. If you are now promoted as a police officer, it is your responsibility to go and buy the uniforms to suit the new uh, 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 rank. They are selling them there behind the force headquarters, everybody knows. So uh, police really is in a very messy situation. If the federal government cannot, cannot do the needful, for the police based on the glaring security challenges. And that is where I'm sympathizing my support for those agitating for state original policy. Of course, it has its attendant consequences. Politicians will uh, use it to emasculate their opponents and do all sorts of things. But necessity is what has brought about their agitations for these kind of things. And if we want to do it, section 153 of the Constitution, subsections K, L, and M that talks about National Defense Council the Nigerian Police Council and the Nigerian Security Council should be considered for amendment to bring out it as a new structure. So that when the new structure is embedded, we will now be able to amend sections 214 to 216 that talks about police. And then we will be able to amend the Police Act too. Once we do that, one, it comes to play. I think in view of the uh, inadequacy of the, the way they are handling them at the federal level, uh, it is not a bad idea to consider maybe the state and the uh, uh, regional policy. After all, in some countries, we have it. Then uh, somebody asks about, uh, I think it's Abdullah Hisani, uh, leadership without uh, uh, character. Uh, we should extract the leadership process. This one will be a special <laughs> webinar if we are talking about that one, because a lot of things need to be said here. Uh, the, but the central word is, uh, 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 morality is the absence of morality in the way we are being governed. If morality can be institutionalized, there is no reason why you will subject me to buying a form for 100 million naira. 100 million naira to be an aspirant, as an aspirant within the party, 100, which 100 million naira is more than legitimate four times salary of the president. You say you want to aspire, and apart from that, you keep spending money, you know, dollarization of delegates. We saw it here to the, in the glaring presence of the EFCC and ICPC. Delegates were given dollars. They were rejecting Naira in the country, a sovereign country of Nigeria's Naira currency. So we saw it, and we condone it. And we saw a situation whereby people that used to hoist leaves on their uh, uh, head on election day that they are for sale, we're looking for 200, 500. Now they are looking for cartons of spaghetti and drapers. You know, they are, they are no more looking for, for, for that. So there is inflation even in the, the cost of inducement for somebody to, 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 to vote for you. So generally, it is the whole attitude that will change the leaders and the decision that will change. Then uh, 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 somebody talks about whether there is a rationale to increase worker salary. Well, under section uh, 33 of the, con no, not 33, uh, 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 section 23, 23 that talks about dignity of labor. It is mandatory on the government to respect labor, to respect dignity of labor. In those days, once you are above 40 years, you will be ashamed to say something and tomorrow to deny it in those days. Talk less of uh, a, a document you sign with the labor a document you sign, and it metamorphoses into even a law that after every so-so years, there will be so-so percent of increase in the salaries. I, I don't think it is any, uh, uh, the, uh, there is any contradiction there. The government should respect the law, and the government should honor the agreements, uh, and uh, bearing in mind that uh, what they are looking for is a P not compared with what the political class you know, are enjoying in the country. After all, somebody who is in the workforce or who is even unemployed may have more responsibilities than His Excellency, the distinguished somebody in the country. <laughs> yes. The next is, uh, what practical way do we use to regulate uh, National Assembly? Well, that is a very difficult something. Like we said, when they have been given this power by sections uh, 411 and other sections of the Constitution, that they are the ones to regulate under section 60 their own conduct, their own this thing, their own this thing. They are the ones to make their own laws, to make their own regulations, uh, standing rules, and the rest. 
is honestly speaking is a very difficult uh, 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 thing i don't know how we go about it and uh, they have accorrogated to themselves power even beyond the president because even if the president decides uh, uh, to not to sign anything they can veto it and up to third of them and then it passed into law and if the president decides to go by executive order they reject it they say it contradicts the constitution and there's virtually nothing you can do so i don't know how we will go about this but uh, uh the only thing i can say is that if the president has the real serious interest of the country at heart there is nothing wrong in for him to call for a political conference just like president goodluck did a political conference when the political conference comes assembled some of the you know a vocal distinguished members of the national assembly members of the bar members of the bench you know uh, including if possible some uh, envoys that have served nigeria elsewhere so that they'll give us comparative peer review of uh, the things going on there so that at the end of it you now subject it to the national assembly as a bill of law and then you now request them that uh, in the spirit of morality, since you are part and parcel of the evolution of these articles of decisions, please pass it for the decision. If that one can, can be decent, especially if you can present it some few days before the end of their National Assembly tenure, uh, when they know that the decision will not be applicable to them. So, so probably that one will uh, this. Then how do you... Um, um, uh, uh, then the issue of tenure of five years, I think we have dealt with that. How do you ensure Section 10 of the Constitution is uh, respected? Well, Section 10 is one of those uh, fallacies of reality that Nigeria decided to adopt. Uh, Section 10, ordinarily, if I am one of the those who drafted the Constitution, will have been Nigeria is a multi-religious society. If you put it that way, multi-religious society, it will have solved the problem. But where you said that... Uh, uh, that we shouldn't ad adopt state religion there clearly, in clear terms, then I, I am sorry to submit that any other structure in the name of the religion is uh, repugnant to our constitution and to that extent is null, void, and illegal. Uh, I do not support establishment of any religious institution uh, in a country where the constitution says there is no state religion. Uh, that is my submission on that. Then... Um, uh, uh, what else? Um, uh, I think, uh, okay, okay, here. Uh, my learned senior brother, I did the GSA and said that the exclusive legislative list should be looked uh, into. Really, I support him 100%. As a matter of fact, in my submission, you will see where I recommended that, uh, like, Ministry of uh, Agriculture. All those uh, uh, ministries at the exclusive this should go to residual. Uh, I, I suggested about 13 ministries there. Uh, if you go through my paper, agriculture is one of them. Sports too is another one. Uh, 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 women affairs is another one. Uh, youth is another one. Uh, water resources is another one. Um, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. Then uh, somebody talks about... Uh, uh, fiscal federalism. I am seriously in support of fiscal federalism. Uh, I'm in support of fiscal federalism uh, simply because it will it will reduce docility and indolence. Uh, so many uh, governors are very very lazy. They are just waiting for monthly allocations from the federation. The decision that is all. Then they gather it with the local government something. But I am very very sure. Uh, the type of mineral resources lying in the buried in the sand on our land, uh, uh, which the government, I am not comfortable with the level of the attention the federal government is given when it is here now under the exclusive list. The mineral resources are there, and then government is not making any efforts. Courtesy demands that even if the government doesn't want to invest in it, you can invite some uh, technical experts and then sign agreement of, uh, say, BOT, or 50-50 profit sh ratio sharing and the risk. And then the nation will benefit. But look at it there. Uh, in my own area, for example, when you go, these are areas, as you are moving like this, you will be hitting particles of gold. Gold on the ground, you, you, you will see it. 
If it rains, you will see how, uh, you know, fresh diamond will be coming out of the dish. On its own, you don't need to, to tap the dish. But why? Because there is even no road navigating itself to the DC. No federal road, no federal presence at all in the area. So federal government is not even aware. Even if they are aware, they are aware of the report produced in 1962. It was in 1962 that uh, this enclave, these bushes that you are seeing, uh, were discovered to be rich in huge minerals. In my area up to now, when you dig a well, you take, you will think it's uh, petrol. You, you quickly throw out the decent and uh, you, you see a lot of solid minerals there. The late Sir Amadou Bella was the one that went to India and Pakistan and uh, procure neem tree, bamboo tree, all those trees and they planted them. Those are the things that germinate into serious thick bush now that uh, criminals are using it as shield and there are a lot of minerals. So I believe if it's considered for uh, return to states, uh, the states will be, and then reduce whatever you are getting from other states. Let greater of the efforts be what you can extract or what you can generate from your own decision. That will make the governors to sit up and, uh, and uh, be serious to the responsibilities uh, 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 of the people. Then how can the office of the attorney general be used? Ah, well, I, uh, anyway, is the field of my grandmaster. But uh, the office at the attorney general, as a matter of fact, let me posit one thing. No government, no government, no government, I repeat three times, can have entrenchment of success better than the quality of its attorney general. In the Constitution, section 130 says that the president is the chief executive officer of the country. Now, the, 